writing rules with the y-intercept method. So here we're looking again at using that equation y equals mx plus c, but instead of starting with the rule and using the intercept and the gradient to give us the graph, we're actually going to work backwards. We're going to look at the line on the graph and work backwards to find the rule. So just a quick reminder for ourselves, m is our gradient, and that's always found using our rise over our run and c is our y-intercept, which we can find by looking at the graph to see where the line crosses the y-axis. Now, we're being asked to write the rule for the following lines. So looking down around here, the method that we'll use to do this is to first off calculate the gradient m. And what we need to do is actually use two points on the line and count out the rise of a run between them and watch our signs about plus or minus m. Remembering that a plus m goes up and has a line that looks like so and a minus m meaning a minus gradient or negative gradient goes down will be a line that looks like this. So looking at these four lines right now, I can tell that this one's going to be a negative gradient, this one's going to be a negative gradient, the black will be positive, and the red will be positive. Because the red and the black are both pointing upwards, they're getting bigger as we move along the line. Kind of think about moving along the line in the direction that you read, always from left to right. And the blue line, you're going down the hill, you're kind of rolling down it, you're losing height, so it's a negative one. And same for the green. As you move along, the line's getting lower and lower, so it's a negative gradient. So the green and blue, they're looking down, they're negative gradients, and the black and the red are positive, they're looking upwards, they're going to be positive gradients. So to count out the gradient between them, you have to pick two points on the line that are easy to read. So as an example, I wouldn't want to pick a point like this one and this one, because the right kind of in the middle of that grid, of the xy grid, and it's really hard to tell exactly what that is. Is that 4.1, negative 4.1? What is it? So the trick here is to always try and pick points to read that are directly on a grid line intersection there. So there we clearly can tell that we're at 2 and 0, and if I just go up from that point and try to find the next one that's exactly on an intersection, not here, not here, not there. I actually keep going all the way up until I reach that point and I can see that that line clearly goes through that intersection there. And once I've picked out that intersection, I'm going to start looking to figure out what is going to be the rise over run for those to get between the first point and the second point. So how far up do I have to go and how far over do I have to go? Now to count this out, some students like to look at drawing a little triangle in. So they notice that they have to go up from 2, 1, 2, 3, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, and they kind of see this triangle in here that has a height of 3 up 1, 2, 3 from one point, and has to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know my gradient here is going to be 3, over 4. Again, it's always the rise over the run, and the run is always to the right. You never run left, always to the right. So that's the first thing that we had to find, find our gradient. Now the next thing that we'd find would be the y-intercept. And again, that's just where the point crosses the line, and here we can see that it's a 2, so that's quite easy. So what we have to do is replace the m and the c in the formula. So if we were going to say y is equal to mx plus c, kind of as a general rule, for this particular red line, the gradient is actually 3 over 4, so instead of writing m, I would write 3 over 4, and instead of writing c, I'm going to write 2, because the y-intercept is at 2. So let's see if we can go through that for the second line here. Let's look at the blue one next. So same thing, we need to calculate the gradient. And again, we can use any two points on the line, as long as they're easy to read, so right through the intersections. And looking at that, there's one point there. And if we go along, you might always want to say, 
um, from the two points, you know, you can think about going right to help get your rise over run correct. So from this point, I'm going to move along the line to the right. In this case, it's going down instead of up. And the next point that goes straight through an intersection is actually the very next intersection. So I've got my little triangle in there. And I notice for this one, I actually have to go down one and over one. So think about what going down one means. That's going to be a negative one. So my gradient here is going to be equal to a negative one over one. I'm going down one over one. So negative one over one. And my y-intercept is one. So if I was going to say y is equal to mx plus c, my gradient is actually negative one over one and my y-intercept is actually 1. Now you could write that as well, if you really wanted to simplify it out, as y is equal to negative x plus 1. Because negative 1 over 1 is really just negative 1, and we don't always have to put the 1 in front of a letter, just so you're not confused by that. Remember going the other way, if you saw negative x, you could always draw in the negative 1 over 1. So just so you're familiar with it. Let's look at the green one next. So picking two points on the line to calculate the gradient. You don't always have to start from the y-axis, so let's start mm, let's start maybe somewhere out here. Let's go along from the very end. So let's find the first point that goes right through an intersection, right there. And we'll keep moving to the right until we find the next point that goes right through an intersection, over there. And that's the rise over run that we have to look for. And in a sense, that's actually a fall over a run. We're going down again. So you'll notice here it's still down one and over one, two, three, four. So m here is equal to negative one over four. Write it here. m is equal to negative one over four. Down one over four. My y-intercept is zero. So I would say y is equal to mx plus c. My gradient, however, is negative 1 over 4. My, my y-intercept is 0. Now that's fine, that's okay. But because plus 0 doesn't actually change anything, you don't technically have to write it. You could just say negative 1 over 4x and leave off the plus 0. Both would be correct. And for the last equation here, Again, trying to find two points on the line that we can read easily, just as an example, again, of not having to use the center or the y-axis all the time. Let's start from the end. There's one point. And again, going to the right from there, in this case it moves up. I'm going to stop at the next point that crosses the line exactly. And think about what's my gradient to make up that triangle. I have to go up 1 over 2, so it's going to be 1 over 2. And be really careful that you're always putting the rise on the top of the fraction and then run on the bottom of the fraction. So y is equal to mx plus c. Here my gradient is actually up 1 over 2, so that's 1 half. x and c is going to be negative 3, so instead of saying plus, I'm actually going to say minus 3. So again, calculate out your gradient. And to do that, you need to pick two points on the line that are easy to read, so right through some of those intersections. Watch out for your positives or negatives. If you have to go up when you're moving to the right, you've got a positive gradient because you're going up. If you have to go down, you have a negative gradient because you have to go down there, like the blue line here. And it's always a run to the right. The run is always in the right direction. After that, you need your y-intercept, which is exactly where the line crosses the y-axis in that case at negative 3, and then literally replacing the m and the c in the formula. So m is always with the x, and double check your signs. So make sure the gradient is always written with the letter x, and the y-intercept is on its own, and double check whether it's a positive or negative gradient, and also whether it's a positive or negative y-intercept. 